Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Sabanson, and welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show. We cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and we'll be give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. Today, we got a show that's probably going to piss off some people, but I don't give a damn because we got to get into the truth of the matter. So, uh, before we get into it, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Now, I remember it like it was yesterday. I remember Kobe winning his fifth NBA championship uh in 2010 and i remember the lakers and these guys being on top of the world and then i remember the summer free agency of lebron james right where he had to make his decision and i remember all of the people speculating on whether he would go to this team stay in this team go over there go over there go over there but when lebron went on tv and had that televised news conference or whatever it was where he declared that he's going to be going to the Miami Heat to go play alongside Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh. I mean, you could literally feel the energy in the sports world change like that. He went from being a figure that some people liked to a figure that the entire NBA hated. Not just LeBron James. They also didn't like Dwayne Wade. And they also didn't like the Miami Heat. If I had to put it in order, it would be the LeBron, the Miami Heat, and then Dwayne Wade. They, I mean, the NBA really, really did not like that move. You even had people like Michael Jordan and all of these other former greats saying, he, you know, he's he's more into competing these guys. He wouldn't want to compete. Like, a lot of people were against it. A lot of people were against it, including the fans. Everybody hated it because they thought that these guys just ruined basketball. Now, why do they feel that way? At the time, you had a finals MVP in Dwayne Wade, who had just come off of a season where he led the league in scoring, although his team didn't have a good record. You had a guy in Chris Bosh who was perennially leading his team to the playoffs, who was a 20 and 10 guy. And then you had a guy in LeBron James, who some was saying is the best, best or second best player, whatever it is in the world at the time, coming off of a loss in the Eastern Conference Finals. And then you pair these three guys together. And essentially, everybody was saying that you're bringing these three guys together in their prime. This is unfair. This is not basketball anymore, right? And they they were hated for it. But then something interesting happened. I tuned into an episode of Carmelo Anthony seven. Was it, I think seven p.m. or seven a.m. in Brooklyn or something like that. Uh, actually, let me get it right. Let me give him the proper the proper just do. It is seven. Let me get it right. Seven p.m. Uh, in Brooklyn. So he's on there and he has his former Olympic teammate and friend who Dwayne Wade on the show. And Dwayne Wade is there talking about his career. He's talking about the differences between Kobe and LeBron, all of these different things. And then they asked him to kind of take us behind the curtains of what that process was like, you know, him being the man of the Miami Heat and that city to now bringing in a LeBron James and now trying to take on a, a role player's role or something like that or be the Robin to his Batman and all of that. And he was discussing the difficulty of what that decision entailed and how everybody didn't want it. And then he got to the end. He was like, nobody wanted this move. Even the NBA, even NBA fans for basketball, everybody hated this move. So for those of you who didn't hear what Dwayne Wade had to say, want to play for you now. And I'm going to come back and react to his comments. Take a listen to Dwayne Wade here. I mean, yeah, we got an opportunity to realize we can play together. Like it took me to really compress my ego big time. And I didn't even have a huge ego because I've, I wasn't, I didn't always grow up a star. Right. I grew up a role player right. who eventually became a star mm -hmm. because of my work and because of my opportunity and my moments. But I had to go right back to that. And, and it was in Miami where I had built Wade County. I right. turned a city into a hoop city with my teammates. And it's not just me. But that was hard. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to lie. It was tough. But man, you know what? I was like, I feel like that was the best move for me to make to get the things I wanted out of the game. And what I wanted out of the game was I wanted them Larry O'Brien trophies, them Larry mm -hmm. O'Brien trophies, man. Yes, you know what I'm saying. I, I wanted it because I, I already had one, and I knew that feeling, and I was like, I need that again. And so this is going to be my best, my best moment in my career with free agency, where I control it, where I could put myself in the best position to get that again. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the sacrifice was made individually, and to to play with you know one of the goats in our game. Uh, in the city that I have built, you know, worked hard to build it and try right. to get my own. But it was bigger. It's in my mind at that time, I made sense out of it. I'm not, I'm not Serena. I'm not a tennis player. It's right. not an individual sport. It's about the team. It's about what you ultimately want. And this is the best opportunity to get that. And so you're going to figure it out. 
coming from, you said like being like coming from Marquette and being like, you know, underrated and, you yeah. know, did that help in yeah. making that sacrifice? You yeah. Know what I'm my personality, first of all, how, just how I am in life, it helps. You know what I mean? Like I, you got to know who you are. And so I knew that my personality, even though I have an alpha personality, I also understand how to, you know, look at perspective and look on the other side and move to the side. Like I got that ability to be able to sometimes take a break and look, you know what I'm saying, around and see. Some people who are so great, they just, they just look in this way. And I got the ability to be able to stop, you know what I mean, and make a different decision. And so, yeah, was it tough as hell? Yeah, it was tough. But also, too, I think I was the, the perfect person to play that role. It ain't a lot of people that could play that role. Bron is an amazing player, but you got to learn, you got to work around him. Right. And you, to work with him. Um, and so, as you've seen, my first, the first years we were together, we did everything together. Right. We did every interview together, every press conference. Every time you seen him, you seen me. Because we had to be so lock step because we knew, I knew everybody was going, nobody wanted it. My team didn't want it. My family didn't want it. They were pissed. Bron team didn't, Brown team didn't want it. No one wanted that to happen. The game of basketball didn't want to happen. So I made sure I linked myself with Brian even more because I knew we had to be so tight right. or it was going to be a failure. So you heard what Dwayne Wade had to say. Now, what he didn't mention there, but it was something that he mentioned in the past when he had a sit down with Paul Gasol and some other NBA great. I think uh, Dirk Nowitzki was there. I think Steve Nash was there. What he didn't reveal in this in this particular soundbite was the motivation. He spoke about wanting to win a ring and all of that, but he didn't really get to the heart of why he wanted to do that. You know, there's this conversation or this saying that goes around in the NBA where it's like uh, uh, the Warriors joined. No, no, no. The Warriors begged KD to join them because they knew they couldn't beat LeBron. Right. In the finals. Right. Oh, they already beat him, but he said they knew they couldn't beat LeBron. So they needed to get him. Out of fear of knowing they can't beat LeBron. Well, the reason that these guys decided to join together was because there was a day when Dwayne Wade had just finished watching Kobe Bryant win his fifth championship. And they were like, the only way we're going to be able to catch Kobe is that we need to find a way to cheat the process. And we need to come together in order to be able to catch Kobe and stop him from winning championships. So that's what we need to do. For those of you who don't believe that Dwayne Wade said that, and that was the real motivation behind this move, take a listen to Dwayne Wade here. I remember so, cutting my TV off. As soon as you, when Kobe ran and grabbed that ball, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> LeBron. All right, LeBron. Especially <laughs> losing, <laughs> losing against them before. <laughs> CB, CB, I mean, what I ain't lying to you. I'm not lying to you. I cut the TV off when I watched that <laughs> and I watched Kobe run and grab the ball and celebrate. I was like, so what you gonna do? That was our summer free agency. Yeah, they, they had just, they were dominating. Like yeah. Kobe was winning all these rings. I was like, wait, hold on. Now he got five and we got one? Like, no. So yeah, that, yeah. that, that, that was a, that's, that's, that's great how it changed the league. How he I created, want y'all to yeah. know that. Yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> no, we're proud of that. Yeah. So you heard Dwayne Wade himself. Ultimately, I think this decision of LeBron going to the Miami Heat I think it was a net negative. That may sound a little bit controversial, but I'll tell you why. Some people are like, how can it be a net negative for LeBron? He won two championships. Yes, he did win two championships, but overall it was a failure. And I'll tell you why. Going into that move, when they made that move, you had a finals MVP and a guy that just led the league in scoring. You had a 20 and 10 guy in Chris Bosh. You had a guy in uh in um uh, what's his name? You had a guy in um, uh, LeBron James himself who was people arguing is he the best player in the world. Then you had other players like Eddie House and I think um, I think uh, not. I don't think James Posey was on that team. I forgot all the different players that they had. I think Shane Battier was on that team. Udonis Haslam and all of these guys, right? And the Miami Heat were so confident. They were so confident in the team that they built that not only did LeBron feel like they could win the next championship. He felt that they would win the next seven championships. The next seven. Not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not... They knew what they did. They knew they had created an unplay, uh, unfair... Uh, 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 what is it? Uh, playing ground. They knew that. So you were so confident that you were going to win seven championships. Seven 
in your first year, you go to the NBA Finals and you have the biggest meltdown meltdown by any superstar. One can argue in the history of sports, LeBron did. It was, I mean, it was an eye and I saw it. It was epic. If you saw that series, the way Jason Terry, Sean Marion, and these dudes were talking to LeBron, these dudes were abusing him. This is a prime LeBron James, 26, 27, being verbally abused by these dudes. He, I mean, it was crazy, right? So you lose that finals, and then your legacy that was supposed to take this big hit ended up taking um, take this big jump, took a massive hit. Massive hit. Then you go to the next finals, and then you win. Then I think you win another one, and then you get blown out in the fourth finals by a record margin by the San Antonio Spurs. Overall, I don't see how you can say that was a great run. As, in, as a matter of fact, one of the reasons some people still hold out for LeBron being called the greatest player being compared to Michael Jordan was his 2011 series. It's that series in the final. So this is my thoughts on it. Appreciate Dwayne Wade's honesty. What I want to know from you guys, what do you think about our analysis? What do you think about what Dwayne Wade said? And do you think that that 2011 finals was the one that sealed it for LeBron? Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts in the comments and we catch you on the next show. Peace.